there are not many things in this world which has been born for a reason you might be knowing that but today i have something which is actually born for one reason what's up youtube welcome back to another video and see today we have a dream bike the suzuki hayabusa it's not just a dream bike for me actually it's a dream bike for many people i know whether i want to bike this motorcycle but someday i wanted to ride this motorcycle and these are those days man and this is the generation 3 hayabusa look at that man what a beautiful piece of engineering i always like a beautiful piece of engineering this is a marvelous aerodynamic mechanical whatever you call it it's a masterpiece of its own it's a generation 3 buza you look at it you can figure it out this comes with an austin racing slip on exhaust and the mammoth looking bike man look at the tail section what a beautiful motorcycle and it's been a week time i'm riding this motorcycle and to be honest i'm actually fallen in love with the motorcycle if you ask me if i wanted to buy this motorcycle as my next motorcycle i don't know whether i'll buy it or not but busa has taken a room in my heart definitely so i think most of the indians knows the story of the busa as the motorcycle which has been featured in the movie doom but not many people know the fact that this motorcycle actually was born for a purpose and let's discuss that when i go for that ride front wheel in the air man front wheel in the air i don't know whether i have shown this kind of an excitement in any other video in the recent past so yes let me explain you how this motorcycle was born the first generation of busa so if you know that there was something called as a speed war which was happening i think probably even before many of us were born this was happening in the 80s and 90s so during those days actually the japanese market was ruling the world in the sense honda yamaha kawasaki and suzuki yes the germans was there europeans and some americans was there but during those days the japanese was actually having an upper hand on the speed motorcycles the sports oriented motorcycles so yes these four companies actually bring in motorcycles and they started doing a race where they bring out the most powerful that means the motorcycle which has which has the highest top speed and you know those days there were no abs no traction control nothing like that it's just the bike and the you that's all and those days actually they have come up with 250 plus kilometer per hour motorcycles and it's like every other time when a manufacturer comes with a different motorcycle it used to be like one or two kilometer more and i think in 1996 honda came up with a motorcycle called honda blackbird which actually had an a higher upper cap it was like doing a 290 km per hour which was 10 to 15 km more than what its competitor were doing so it is like it was a benchmark and people were like wow man black bird and during that time itself something really happened and i don't know man we have an open road <laughs> It's all open roads here but let's come back to the story I have this OCD of checking the tire pressure at times just to make sure that I'm riding it safe Let's continue the story. Otherwise, we'll lose the flow. Yes, the Honda Blackbird was there at 290 km per hour mark. And you know what? The Honda Blackbirds. Actually, the name itself comes from a blackbird. And I don't know, fortunately or unfortunately, there used to be a bird called the peregrine falcon, which used to hunt and catch this blackbird. And that peregrine falcon is the fastest ever animal and on this planet. The recorded speed is about 300 km per hour. and sometimes it can do 500 km per hour unofficially you know that bird also knows that there are speed limits and the suzuki hayabusa has taken the design elements from this bird the peregrine falcon so suzuki has made a motorcycle just like engineering a aeroplane they took the inspiration from the bird and they have made a streamlined body they made that generation 1 hayabusa which can do 300 plus km per hour and that is the first time humans have ever seen a motorcycle crossing the 300 km per hour mark and it was like alarming the whole world was like wow because somebody on a two wheel can do 300 plus you know it's unbelievable it's an unbelievable speed that with zero electronics and at that time people doesn't know there are electronics 
I mean, the, they later engineered it. So with the very limited safety features, yeah, people were doing 300 km per hour. And what happened is that the government got scared and they were about to ban the super bikes. And then these manufacturers came up with the gentleman's agreement. So gentleman's agreement means there is no written agreement, but it's a deal between them, an unsaid rule that we are restricting the speed to 299 km per hour. And after that, many motorcycles have crossed the speed, but the thing is they won't show it in the dial. So that's how the speed war ended. And this is that motorcycle which created the hype of crossing the 300 km per hour mark and creating the gentleman's agreement. You know, that's such an iconic motorcycle in the history of motorcycles, the Suzuki Hayabusa. And yes, obviously, we Indians know this motorcycle th through the movie Doom. I was so young when I saw that movie, but there were many other motorcycles in that movie as well. I had an eye on the GSX uh, 600R. <laughs> like, I was looking at that motorcycle. But yeah, the Busa has got the uh, entire attention through that movie. And man, this is built like a missile. This is definitely a missile on two wheels, no doubt about it. Because it's faster, it's too controllable on the high speeds. And compared to the older version of Busa, this has a lot of electronic tech aids. This one comes with a 6-axis IMU and uh, Suzuki has completely utilized it. So this comes with cornering sensitive ABS, cornering traction control and the front wheel lift, the stoppy control and you name it, everything is there in the motorcycle. I don't have to walk you through everything. And uh, this has three preset power modes and three user-defined power modes. That means we can have totally six power modes and the power is adjustable. The quick shifter is good actually. The quick shifter has two adjustments. So the race shifts and the normal shift. So in my opinion, I'll say that the upshift is good, but the downshift is not so good. The upshift happens at any RPM and it has that putt sound when we shift up. Uh, but for the downshift, I'm a little disappointed because uh, compared to other Kawasaki and all, it is not as smooth as that I see for the 6R and the 10R. But the shifting is very good on the upper RPMs. Man, what a road. I think it's a perfect day to ride this motorcycle. Look at the road and look at the bike which I have. The Hayabusa man. And also this comes with a slipper clutch. And obviously these kind of motorcycles actually uh, comes with slipper clutch and standard. And clutch feel is actually lighter. Uh, one update which I see is that this motorcycle is actually a mammoth. It's a big sized mammoth. I have to say that. So to control this motorcycle you need an immense amount of braking. And in my opinion I feel that the braking could have been a little improved still on this motorcycle because this, it's a heavy motorcycle so it takes a little bit of time to bring this machine down to its normal saner speeds yeah, because this can pull you hard literally hard to any speeds that you want but bringing it down will take a little bit of moment and generally what people do when they buy this motorcycle is that they go for steel braided brake lines by the way this doesn't comes with the steel braided brake lines which i'm quite surprised because this is the top top of the line motorcycle from suzuki and they are not providing it but this has a combi braking system where we apply the front brake that actually goes to the rear as well a little bit of rear brake we get that feedback uh, and suspension is actually fully adjustable and uh, the stock setting is actually good it is for comfort so this motorcycle is not so comfortable to ride inside city I, I i'm being very honest with you and this is not a city motorcycle obviously but when it comes to indian market i see that obviously everyone knows that we have to ride our motorcycles inside city for quite a long time to get into this kind of highways the riding posture is actually very sporty we are actually sitting a bit sporty not as sporty as the panigale before but yeah this is actually very sporty motorcycle we have to give this kind of a riding posture every time so if we are sitting upright and trying to control the motorcycle inside city we get a lot of pain on the shoulders but on the highways it's like a sweet motorcycle you can literally cruise at 200 km per hour i'm not kidding you 200 or 260 you wanted to do put in the cruise control and you can do that i know that it's illegal but i'm saying the capacity of this motorcycle the stability of the motorcycle is like next level when it comes to highways and uh, this motorcycle actually costs around 21 lakhs on road and uh, the competitors are like nothing in my opinion because the ZX14R is the actual competitor of this motorcycle. There's only one another hyper motorcycle which I have seen. And uh, to be honest, I say that the 14R is a little bit uh, easy to flicker, easy to ride inside city. But when it comes to highway, the 14R and the Busa actually feels almost similar. So this is to those who are actually looking for the second hand market between the 14R and the Hayabusa. I know that many people uh, doesn't even know that there is a motorcycle called Kawasaki ZX 14R but it's a truly a brilliant piece of engineering from Kawasaki you should check it out uh, there as well and uh, service intervals are like 6000 kilometers which I'm little surprised because 
generally these kind of motorcycles goes out for service once in 10,000 kilometers, but, but this one is 6,000 kilometers. And cost is very affordable. Uh, it's like 9,000. 9,000 is not cheap, but 9,000 is not cheap when it comes to commuter motorcycles. But compared to the superbike scenario, the 9,000 is not so expensive. And I asked that question, which I shouldn't ask to the owner, which is how much mileage this motorcycle returns. So we can have a worst case mileage of 12 to 15 and a neutral mileage of 15 to 18 and a best case mileage of 20 on highways so that's how it goes and 20 is something very rarely that you see because all the time we'll be opening the throttle but if you're on the highway like this and putting it on the 120 and just cruising it along then probably you'll be getting 20 km per liter but there is no fun in riding a boozer like that i wouldn't say there is no fun because this is also fun man it's like it's like a rocket you are just sitting over a rocket you know let me just stop here admire the beauty of the Busa. This is always called Busa. Actually, last week my friend asked me which motorcycle I'm driving, and I like, told that I'm driving a Busa. And then he, he's not too much onto motorcycles, but he has this question that what is that? <laughs> That's by 650. <laughs> yeah, so he asked me what is a Busa. So it's called the High Busa, and uh, those who love the High Busa call it as Busa. Like you know, people call it with that nickname, and that's called the Busa. And yes, man, the Busa is such a sweet motorcycle. Look at it. The too much aerodynamical design. This is so much eye-catching motorcycle because everywhere I go, once in 30 seconds, if it's if I'm in the city, once in 30 seconds, somebody will be looking at me. Not that he's looking at me, but that person is actually looking onto the motorcycle. And one scenario which happened is that there was a huge position. I didn't know that it was a horse, uh, but I was crossing and half of the people were looking onto the busa. I feel sorry for saying this as well, but you know, in that scenario also, if people have to look at a motorcycle, and uh, happily look at a motorcycle then it should be something like Hayabusa I mean I'm that kind of a person who just wanted to cruise peacefully at 250 or 260 km per hour <laughs> too much of irony and too much of illegality with that statement I know that but yeah that's the truth of this motorcycle and yeah also I love this dial man you see that this is one thing which they did good because uh, when they wanted to introduce all the electronics they need to have an LCD screen which is there in the middle and they preserve this analog taco so this one has all sort of things i mean name it you have it except the tpms it has everything this is the taco meter this is the speedometer man it's, i miss the taco on the r1 man really yamaha if you're hearing it bring in the analog taco just that one i mean rest of the things you put it on the graphics i mean analog tacos are like it's real representation of our heartbeat the level of adrenaline that we have in the blood and this one is the fuel level indicator and the heat level indicator i mean nobody really look into the heat level indicator all the time uh, but you know just to maintain that thing suzuki has done that bit oh. wow That is born to be the 300 km per hour mark to eat the Honda Blackbird for the breakfast and here it is the Suzuki Hayabusa and thanks a lot for watching this video I know that my, I sound a little different in this video because I was not keeping well after I taking this motorcycle it is too hot here I literally got a cold because of this heat waves and all and uh, you know I'm on medicines and today I'm having the best medicine in the world and that is the adrenaline pumping from the Hayabusa and I believe that you like this video and as always show some love in the form of likes and comments see you in the next video until then bye bye